What is contemplation in action? Contemplation in action? Well, it depends on um, what you're contemplating on. <laughs> right, it depends on what you're contemplating on. If you're talking about a peaceful contemplation, then of course, and you want to be able to practice entering a state of peace and bringing that to everything and everybody you, you meet along the way. See? So it's contemplation in action. Bringing it into your field see? and trying to maintain, let's say, the, the communication of your condition, which is a peaceful interaction with life and other beings and so on and so forth. Uh, it could be a love contemplation, see? A, a, a contemplation at the heart level and bringing compassion to other people. So it really depends on exactly what you mean by that and to what degree you're able to conduct that uh, in your life, at your work, with your family, uh, at the shopping mall, see, uh, at the gas station, at the bank, see, in the bathroom, anywhere, everywhere. See. The idea is to become see, a more, let's say, unafflicted individual, a more carefree, uh, let's say, warm-hearted, generous, gracious person. Not a robot, see? Not a robot type of, you know, warm-hearted, you know, like a plastic version of it, a plastic doll version of it. No, genuinely creative, dynamic, intense, loving, and uh, giving, you know, giving others the benefit of the doubt as needed and then being as quick as a lightning bolt to act as needed as well, see? So you're not so gentle you can't act, right? And you're not so fierce you can't slow down and stop and kiss a flower, so to speak. Come in. Come in. Yeah. Um, from chapter 103, you write, To do is good, but to be is far superior from the point of view of the enlightened consciousness, which is all must realize their beingness thereof and, and for. What do you mean to do is good, but to be is far superior? Are you implying that being requires a higher level of commitment and our understanding? Uh, is that your question? Yes. Okay. Well, you can be busy, but that doesn't mean you're being being. See? You can be a neurotic, but that doesn't mean you're being being. See? You can be a business person. You can be an ordinary being out here. It doesn't mean you're being being. So, being being is what is more superior to just doing things mechanically, robotically, simply to do them. Running around with, uh, like a chicken without a head, see, is doing things. I'm too busy doing things to stop and be conscious of myself, or spiritual, or let's say peaceful, or healing myself, or repairing and fixing myself, or what I need to fix inside myself. I'm too busy to do that, see. So, of course, if you're so busy you can't get done what you're here to do, then what good is it? See? You're here to take care of your business. And your business is not just outside of your body, it's also inside your body. You've got to take care of that which has to do the business. See? So you've got to work from the inside out. And that's very important, you know, that you be a happy person to a degree, a healed person, dealing with the miseries that you have inherited or created for yourself. Well, do it happily. Say, yeah, I'm miserable, but this is where I'm at, this is where it is. And you can laugh at it and yet still be inspired, see? Still be a kind person, still help other peeps from whatever your station and situation is. See? It's only natural. Yeah. Is conscious breathing considered to be more powerful than praying, and if so, why? Well, you can be praying from a level of anxiety and you can be conscious breathing into peace. So there's no question about it. When you can bring yourself breath-wise to peace, then that's a prayer going out. That's a radiation going out, a peacefulness. And you can be praying fervently, Damn, Lord, Lord, please, you know I need this bill paid. Lord, Lord. And you're frustrated and anxious, even cussing the Lord. I've heard people do that. Say, damn you, Lord, Lord, you know, how, you know everything, so you know how bad this is. You know how this is wrecking us, wrecking my house. <laughs> you created it, I guess you can wreck it, but, you know, give us a break, Lord, you know how bad this is. <laughs> 
Right, so yeah, you can be praying on your knees and, and cussing the Lord out <laughs> at the same time and, and not changing anything. And yet you can breathe peacefully and release karma and bring peace to your people. And you're sharing blessings with the people. So then you see that the yogic approach is a very benign approach. Slowing you down so you're, you're being more the being of your being. That means you're being human, breathing the being. Yeah. Exhaling, breathing in relaxed resonance, that means there's healing going on. Healing here means healing there. So there's a sweetness and a logic to it that has to do with the understanding of grace waves and radiation. So then conscious breathing is a form of giving. Absolutely. Just being here is a form of giving. But it depends on what you're, you're being and what you're giving. So a lot of people are giving others help out here. They do it well. A lot of other people are giving a lot of healing to other people. But there, then there are some who, without the hell, they have no giving, they have no healing. So they need the hell to know how to respond to it. And because the hell is there, then they know what to do. They go into action because they're here to respond to that. Because the darkness is light. And we're talking about the two being polarized so that there's balance. Mm -mm. How does one begin to recognize or identify what's going on in their minds that is causing a limiting effect on their consciousness and karma. Is one able to pinpoint certain thoughts as they enter the mind as being the cause of certain negative karma? Absolutely. Now that's, when we're talking about contemplation, or a certain type of attention, practice of attention, then you can go from zero, see, awareness, uh, in terms of mind, let's say, thought, uh, from their empty, void, let's say, thoughtlessness. We are thoughtlessness, as well as thinking processes. We don't hear the, the thoughts from the, from the knees, particularly uh, until we hurt them. The knees are at peace. The body, the lungs, the body for the most part is at peace. It is peaceful by nature. Especially if allowed, just to relax in the body, it's perfect. See, unless you have uh, problems already. Um, but uh, the idea is, is to understand that the actual nature of the body is, is a certain balance already. So it's already in a state of bliss. It's already naturally blissful. So all you need to do is bring your attention to that, which is already naturally blissful and peaceful. Originally, like... Uh, at, uh, at peace and in harmony, and work from that. So the body is really then the guru, see, in a certain way. The body is the intelligence. And, and uh, it, the more we work with the body as this, this temple of light, uh, by sitting practice or by some, some other activity which brings you to the same place, whether you're an athlete or a musician or a baker or, or a cab driver or whatever, or an airline pilot, a ship's pilot, captain, or whatever, then you, you might have that peace. And it's from that peace that there is healing. See? And there's right action. And there's right this and right that, and all the rest of it falls into place. See? So the idea is to find a groove for yourself. Find your wave, see, your alpha wave, uh, the creative wave that enables you to be stressless but active. See? The doing beyond doing thing. See, knowing beyond knowing. All of this is part of our inheritance as multi-conscious, multi-dimensional intelligences that are on Earth but not limited to what the Earth is. And we're space beings. We are basically space beings. Okay? Pretending to be a certain kind of human. Yeah. When we're really space beings having a hard time with human nature. That means we're not bringing the space element into our time existence. And that's what our responsibility is. See, is to balance out the, t the spaceness with the timeness. Mm. How does one release awareness from whatever is binding or limiting? Binding or limiting? Relax. Peace. Breathe. Okay. So you get to the source of the breath. You can release the awareness that way. You've got to follow it. I mean, people say make the anchor of attention your breathing. It's pretty traditional. 
Stop, just breathe. Put your attention in your stomach, in your hara area. See? See? Between the navel and the reproductive area. There, there's a, there's a power point down there. Just put your attention there. It's the easiest thing in the world. Bring your attention down to the, to the earth, the earth part, the groundingness. So you've got to make your attention part of your grounding, let's say, practice. So that you, you can feel your relationship to the earth. We don't usually do that. We feel our, our relationship is like neurotic relationship to peeps and business and time games and re relation games and all kinds of head games. See? But we don't, we don't ground ourselves properly in the, in the process. And that's what we need to be doing. Grounding yourself in, pro in, in the process of knowing you're earth-centered. And then you want to be heart-centered. Because you're earth-centered, okay, you can get with the earth-centered in two seconds. Like, Oh yes, I'm with my earth, my feet are on the earth, I'm held down by the forces of gravity, and I have a heart, and I have a brain. Yeah, that's, that's what I am. Let me be that for a couple of seconds. And you have a meditation that is self-healing, on the spot. Would you rec recommend to somebody that has um, physical limitations with breathing, like what can they... Chant. Just chant. That's like giving a kind word. Chanting is like a sound. That's a service. That's like speech. That's called conscious speech. And yogic speech. So you're chanting a tone to uh, galvanize and polarize all the atoms to a pitch, a sound. And they say a, a note. Frequency, the whole body sort of like arises to that and is that, and that's a stillness point. It's a healing point at the same time. It's also a breathing point, and it's also calming the brain. Right? It's giving the brain a break because it's the simplicity of a you. It's demanding peace. It's galvanizing the energy of the body. And then, 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 you know, let's say all the various fragmented you know, programs that are going this way and that way. Right, right into this like, like beam. Still this point. So it's ancient. Yeah. And so it's scientifically, scientifically proven. Yeah. Since it's ancient, it survived. And the natives use it. And the meditators use it. All the right people use it. So anybody can use it for good purpose to a good result. See? See? Oh, that's it. You don't need any brains. You just need to do that. You can get a, get a baby to do that. See? You can get a, a cat and a dog to do that. See? Mm. It takes nothing. And then there's healing there. See? Because there's, there's integration. See? That's what we're here to learn about. How to best integrate ourselves in, the, in this crazy existence we've created. It, was mad. it is a mad time world for the moment. We need to bring our spatiality into this time world to help balance it out for ourselves and for our people. Is it difficult for most people to <clears throat> bypass the mind and put their trust in pure feeling and intuition? Is it difficult? Uh, obviously, it could be difficult, but it doesn't seem like it's difficult. If couples came together to practice, it's that difficult. Well, they say, yes, listen, before we eat, we're going to do this. See, we're going to heal before we eat. Well, before we go here, before we go there, let's just sit for a moment and heal. See, let's integrate. See? Not disintegrate. Let us integrate. See? See? Let us harmonize ourselves. Let us unify our energies to a certain degree. See? Not enter a sameness, uh, particularly, a degree of sameness. See? Or difference. Somewhere in between sameness and difference, you have something going on. See? Where you have the calm, see? the okayness. See? Which is neither neutral nor non-neutral. It's just okayness. Is zero. Hard space. From chapter 104 you write, Many progressing spirits who are passing through preliminary or beginner's stages of spiritual practice will recognize that their practice is self or ego generated rather than spontaneous from within. This form of ego practice, although karmically appropriate and necessary in the beginning, 
acts as a means of self-possession relative to spiritual life. This activity, in turn, must be dropped or transcended in order to, for purification to be the case. What if someone can't get beyond ego-generated practice? Are they better off in well, that Well, they case? can't yet, but they can. Anybody can, under the right conditions. Because they're not always in the ego-generated state. See? They have to know when they're not in that state, when they're more at peace, more relaxed, doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. It's not a continuous state. Let's say it's a referred to state, it's more of a habitual state. But it's not a real state, it's a passing state. It's a fluctuating state of consciousness. See? So it's not a real self because there's no real self. Yeah. There is no self that you take to crap. When you got to go to the bathroom and take a crap, Right? Or even a shower, yourself has nothing to do with it. Yeah. When you go to sleep, you don't need a self. You just go to sleep. Yourself has nothing to do with certain things. Yeah. When you're inhaling and breathing, there's no, no self involved in that. Ordinarily, it's just involuntary. It just happens. See? It's natural. So there's a natural beingness to each being. And sometimes some people are just by nature, by habit, more egomaniacal than others. They're conditioned that way, and sometimes it's in their blood, so they have a gene, egomaniacism, a gene for it. And so, but even that is conditional, because when you're petting your animals and you're taking care of your animals, you loosen up, you're very open and very kind to certain beings, you're selfless. So even the greatest egomaniacs have their softness, their time off. When they're relaxed, whether it's playing ping pong or something, you know, doing something recreational, or driving a car, or, you know, flying an airplane, or, or playing an instrument. See? They have their time when they're completely relaxed and at, at ease and at, at one. See? They are in the state of at oneness, see? without self-thought, without anxiety, without separation. They're just there, they're here, right in the now. Boom! They're gone. And then they come back. The difference between their state and then, it, uh, uh, let's say, a practitioner's state is that the practitioner extends that sense see, of okayness into the general field of life see, and being relaxed all the time. It becomes a habit, see, it becomes a way of being relaxed, letting go spontaneously see, and relaxing, coming to peace, coming to ease. See. There has to be practice first. You need training. You can train yourself, just as um, some of us had to train ourselves to play music. Right? And so, or, or to dance, or to sing, or whatever. Yeah? You have to know how you did it, yeah? and why you did it. And you know exactly the, the answers to all the questions most people have in terms of what it is they have to do. Uh, apart from being artists. See? Come in. How does one recognize what their true capacity for enlightened self-liberation is? Well, firstly, there's no way you can recognize what your true capacity is. You, you, you need to have some understanding of what it is that you're doing. And if you have access to, let's say, masterworks, like in the case of music, musicians go to, say, the works of Mozart and Beethoven, or John Coltrane and Miles Davis for jazz, Mastery. I mean, to name just a few of the great giants out there. And then you, you, you measure yourself in terms of what you need relative to what that standard is. Yeah. And you see where you fit into it. And then you want to go beyond that. You say, yeah, no, I want to match that standard and then I want to, I want to make my own contribution. It's the same spiritually in terms of enlightenment. So you want to match the standard of understanding and practice. You want to get there. You say, I want to practice. I want to sit. I want to meditate. Or you have the intelligence to get to the wisdom of that, like, like that. If you're not able to practice, then you have schools that focus on wisdom as enlightenment. Yeah? And not just yoga as enlightenment. See? Wisdom, mind, see? as being as much a part of the instant enlightenment process. Knowing, see? intuitive see? realization. Uh, is something that we all have the capability of, and so you can have any person anywhere, like on a subway train, reading a book about wisdom, and then all of a sudden have in that second thing, an enlightenment experience. They had a, a falling away of anything of the self, and they enter a state of like awareness, 
<laughs> then they have to come back out of it, of course, otherwise they might get lost in the car. Or, you know. And so it, it is with us all the time. See, so our capacity is never properly tested because we, we don't know how to test what it is. See. We don't know what it is to test it. But we are that. See. It is your nature to be free of self-thought, mind and world. And paradox is we are those things as well. But not absolutely and ultimately those things. See. We are the breathing being. We are the basic space of life itself. Yeah. We are the life force. We are the clear awareness see, of itself. Thank you.